This is the second part of our Chapter 6 video in CCNA 2, Inter-VLAN Routing. We've got about, I don't know, 14 slides um, to discuss how VLANs can communicate with each other. They cannot communicate with each other without going through a router. You can think of a VLAN on, as being on its own network. If you want to uh, communicate from network to network, you need a router to do so. Um, switches don't perform those functions. Unless, unless it's a layer 3 switch, of course, which we don't get into just yet. So, inter-VLAN routing. Basically, the router using a legacy setup, which is what this is, um, there's nothing special that needs to happen to it. Your VLANs are just going to send their traffic up through the router. The router knows where the other network is on the other side, and it sends it on down. Uh, to the router, nothing special is happening in this setup. Okay, the VLANs are on their own network, um, and they're communicating ch with each other just like they were on separate networks. Okay, so VLAN traffic from VLAN 10 would come up through the router out to VLAN 30, and the router again doesn't really care that they have they're on their own separate separate VLANs. It's just seeing oh, there's a packet from network 172.17.10, um, sending it over to network 172.17.30. Okay, um, so that is a legacy setup. Um, you had to have a VLAN on each physical interface. Each VLAN had their own uh, IP address or IP network that they belonged to. Um, so you're just able to route through those different interfaces to the different VLANs. Problem with that is you need one port per VLAN. And if you have many VLANs working within your network topology, then uh, you're going to, well, have to buy a lot of uh, uh, WIC slots for your router to add more ports, um, and that can get expensive or add more routers in general. Uh, so that's why this became legacy. It is not uh, the newest way to do things because it does cost more and um, it's going to be, well, more of a chore to set up, okay, in terms of equipment and buying equipment. Uh, here's another example of the a legacy inter VLAN routing, just basically stating that your traffic from one VLAN would go into one port and um, it would be routed down to whichever other network through the other port. Okay, um, so again the router, no special setup required, you're just going to go into the interface, uh, assign it an IP address like you normally would and that's about it on the router. Okay, where things get a little bit different, or a lot different, is when you use the newest technique for inter VLAN routing, which is router on a stick or using one interface to route between VLANs on your router. Whereas in the previous example, we needed a separate interface for each VLAN, you can use one interface for all your VLANs, multiple. Um, really up to 50 is what they say the limit should be because that if you once you reach 50 VLANs your traffic can be affected and it doesn't scale well beyond that so um, 50 is the magic number for router on a stick which you don't want to go over in terms of um, creating VLANs on one port or one interface okay uh, so how does it happen well on your ports you're going to create sub interfaces one sub interface for each VLAN all right, you have got that interface. You're going to set it up uh, to support 802.1Q, uh, which um, is the VLAN tag that is added to your frame. Uh, we saw back in the previous portion of this chapter. Okay, so that allows the router to handle those tags in a frame or interpret them. Uh, each sub interface is going to be configured with the IP address of the VLAN it represents and hosts that belong to that VLAN are going to use that sub-interface as their default gateway. Uh, so what does that all mean? It's going to look a little something like this. Okay. Uh, so you're going to end up creating sub-interfaces on your router like um, G00.10, G00 or Gigabit Ethernet 00.20.30. Typically you're going to match those numbers for the sub-interfaces like .10 dot two zero dot three zero uh, with the VLAN number okay that's just a better way to keep things organized in a second uh, we'll see how that's configured and um, see what's uh, what's important and what's not all right um, previous slide previous slide said that 
any VLAN uh, associated with the subinterface is going to use that subinterface's address as its default gateway. So all devices in VLAN 10 would use this IP address as their default gateway. All in VLAN 20 would use the one off to the left of my mouse here. Um, that IP address is the default gateway. Same thing with VLAN 30 here. So that falls in line with what we saw on the last slide. Um, also, what's going to be important here is the switch. The port on the switch that is connected to the router is going to be configured as a trunk to carry those multiple VLANs to the router. The router doesn't have a uh, trunk command that you enter in, but you do create these sub-interfaces that basically sets up your router's interface as a trunk. Okay. So your traffic, I know it seems kind of silly, but your switch can't communicate between VLANs. The traffic's going to go up to the router. The router's going to see which VLAN it belongs to and spit it right back down to the switch um, through the tr switch's trunk port. Um, and then that switch is going to make a decision as to what ports to forward it out uh, based on the VLAN tag. Okay, so that is what's going to happen there. Basically, the traffic shoots up to the router, then right back down to the, down to the switch. All right, um, that's how you communicate between VLANs. So each one of these VLANs can communicate with each other. They just have to send their traffic up to the router first, and the router spits it back down. Okay. Um, this is just a couple exercises identifying uh, inner VLAN routing versus, or I should say, legacy inner VLAN routing versus router on a stick. Again, legacy, each port on the router would have to be associated with a specific VLAN. Router on a stick, you could have multiple VLANs associated with one port. So this, of course, since we have sub-interfaces, you can see that over here, this is router on a stick. And next example, uh, one port for each VLAN, that is legacy. Okay. <clears throat> and let's see what we have here. Looks like mostly stuff we've gone over already, each VLAN having its own uh, port on the router or interface on the router. Uh, each one of those interfaces having an IP address that's in the same network as the VLAN. And really, as far as the router is concerned, again, nothing too different in the setup. Really, nothing different at all. In fact, if we look down one slide, uh, you can see there's nothing different that you do in the setup of the router. Uh, for a normal interface, you're just going to go into the interface, give it an IP address uh, and a no shutdown, and that's what we've been doing throughout the class to set up your interfaces on a router. Okay. And I don't see anything else there. I guess you got a copy run start. Yeah, nothing, nothing special. Nothing special. Uh, where things get different is with this router on a stick. So here you are going to create sub interfaces um, for each VLAN in your network. In this network down here, we've got VLAN 10, uh, VLAN 30, and I can't see VLAN 20, but there is a address for VLAN 20 there, so it must be around somewhere. I'm just not seeing it. So we'll say there's a VLAN 20 as well, even though it's not listed um, on the topology. So once again, this uh, if you're going to create sub-interfaces on your router uh, for each VLAN, it should be connected to a truck, trunk link. Okay, And those sub-interfaces are going to be in the same network or subnet um, as your devices within each VLAN. Okay, because they're all basically their own network. Each VLAN has its own network address space. All right. So this is on the switch side of configuration. You've got VLAN 10 and VLAN 30 that we're working with here. So they've created VLAN 10 and VLAN 30. We discussed in the previous per portion of this presentation that you probably, after you create a VLAN, want to name it, give it a name of some sort so you can identify it in your show VLAN brief a lot easier, um, or your show VLAN command a lot easier. Okay, um, They've gone into this interface and done a switch port mode trunk and just turned on the trunk interface. They didn't ma uh, bother to move the native, uh, native VLAN on the trunk or allow specific VLANs on the trunk, which means if they just entered in this command, uh, you're going to be sending all VLAN traffic to the router. Um, there's no 
Um, there's no denial of access to any VLANs. All VLAN traffic will be allowed if you don't do that uh, switch port mode allowed command and allow certain VLANs uh, across the trunk. Okay, so they just set it up the default way, which in real life, probably not the best idea, but that's what we have for our example here. Okay, um, so this is where we have our new concepts and information in this portion of the presentation. So this stuff we've done before, all right, that's in the previous uh, portion of the chapter. Here's how you create your sub interfaces. And uh, there are certain things that are, well, certain thing that is more important than the rest. So your sub interfaces, <clears throat> we're working with Gigabit Ethernet 00. That's the one interface in the router that we are working with. And we're going to create sub interfaces by typing in dot some number, uh, dot 10, dot 30, for instance, because we have VLAN 10 and 30. What is important to remember is that that dot 10 and dot 30, that number doesn't need to match the VLAN, okay? Um, that could be dot anything. It could be dot 500, dot uh, 970. It doesn't matter. It's best if it matches, just for organizational purposes. Um, it'll keep things lined up and make things less confusing, but it's not essential for things to work. What is essential is this encapsulation dot 1Q matching your VLAN number. So this needs to match your VLAN 10. This needs to match your VLAN 30. Otherwise, um, it's not going to function properly. This is your VLAN tagging that the fort is looking for, okay, or look, that it's associated with. So this is the important number. Encapsulation dot one Q, yada yada, has to match your VLAN. All right? So one more time, this needs to match your VLAN. Okay, your VLAN number, this number here does not need to match. Okay, that's probably the most important thing to pull from this. Also, you want to do your encapsulation dot one Q before you type in the IP address. That is the order of operations. You'll run into trouble if you don't, if you reverse it. Okay, in fact, it'll uh, give you a error on a sub interface if you try to type in an IP address without doing the encapsulation dot one Q first. So you'll know that something is wrong because I believe it's a uh, invalid command error that you'll get if you try to enter in a IP address <clears throat> before you do the encapsulation dot one Q. All right, um, so how do we confirm that? We can do a show VLANs that'll show you your VLANs you've, you've created with that encapsulation dot one Q and which sub interface you're associated with. If you just show your normal routing table, those sub interfaces will show up in the networks that they're associated with here. Okay, um, so two ways to do it. I guess show IP route is probably our most familiar command, but show VLANs on a router also does work. Okay, um, how do we verify? We can ping, we can trace route, and you can see how that the packet moves or the frame moves from the switch, or really to the router. Yeah, switch to the router to the, uh, to the destination device. Okay, it won't just go through the switch to the other VLAN. It has to go up through the router um, and use the router to communicate across VLANs. All right, so, oh, well, that's the end of inter-VLAN routing. Uh, and that's the end of chapter six. So, a couple new concepts, a little bit longer chapter. Uh, probably going to split it up into two days worth of lecture.